to Charlton Benefice where we're live streaming from St Luke's today. Whether you're at home or in the building, we're very happy to see you. My name is Nick and I'll be guiding us through the service this morning. Danny is reading the New Testament, Gloria the Gospel, Rick is interceding and Bennett is preaching and presiding. We are the body of Christ and we come together this morning to be fed by God before we go out to serve. Before we start, let's just be quiet and remember that wherever we are, we're in the presence of the living God. We sing our first hymn, number 422, Lord, we come to ask your healing. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mothering Sunday service, and especially welcome to those who are here for the first time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself, strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence, to bind together and to heal, through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do we have someone from the Sunday school? Uh, let us sit for our readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Danny has the New Testament lesson.
A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all. Consolation who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any afflic affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. This is the word of the Lord. After our next hymn, Gloria will read the gospel and Bennett will preach. Please would you stand to sing hymn number 623, Take Me Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary and the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and a disciple, disciple who loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was not now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please sit down. I once knew a woman who was angry with God because she could not have a baby. If God loved her, if God existed, then surely he would have answered her prayers and she could conceive a child. The fact she failed to conceive was proof that God did not love her or that even that God did not exist. In time, however, this woman came to realize that she was wrong on both accounts. But it was a painful realization. She suffered in her sense of isolation and disappointment. At the end of her journey, at the heart of her journey, was the emerging understanding that being a mother is not always about a physical relationship with a child. Being a mother is as much about self-sacrificing self love as anything else. And of course, self-sacrificing love is not gender restricted. Self-sacrificing love takes us into what it means to be created in the image of God. If we look at all the great stories of the New Testament, the stories that Jesus is telling us something, when we put them all together, Jesus is telling us that what is true of the Messiah becomes true of, the, of his people. Jesus becomes the ultimate explanation to the human condition. Jesus becomes the gateway to a restored garden of Eden, a pathway home to the Father. In Jesus, all human expectations are focused into himself and into God, the creator of all we know and understand. This new understanding opens up when we embrace our capacities to love. When we set aside what we think we know for what really is. It is only love that enlightens us to this reality. 
there is the power of God within all of us. And it is that love which we can extend the creative force called love to all of life. Jesus, in his final words, makes clear to those who can hear him that a mother's love is an important part of the great, greater love of God. And it is this love that is sustaining all that we see and feel. It is a love that is nurturing and self-sacrificing. Jesus wonderfully and clearly illustrates this with his instructions that Mary, his mother, was now the mother of his friend John, and that John was the son of Mary, the mother of Jesus. What they were witnessing at the foot of the cross and in his suffering was God's love for humanity and creation. And that this love was all embracing, unrestricted by human formalities and perceptions. The story of Moses is for many of us the biblical story that we remember the most clearly from our childhood. It is the story of two mothers, one who had a child she loved dearly and cannot keep for its own sake and survival. Another woman, Pharaoh's daughter, who by chance is presented with the opportunity to be a mother when perhaps she had no expectations of being one. There is in the hearts of both women a self-sacrificing denial of expectations that is necessary to love this child. Over the past 14 months, I have watched my grandson Elijah come into this world. I have watched the changes that so radically took over his parents in such a complete and comprehensive way from a young, adventurous couple doing what pleased them when they wanted and enjoying life and doing what made them happy. The arrival of the much-wanted Elijah brought about the necessity of self-sacrificing love. Nothing in their lives now matters more than Elijah. The demands of the newborn Elijah are relentlessly demanding. Everything of what they need and wanted would now be replaced as secondary to the needs of this child. A self-sacrificing love was required, a love that transformed them into a t an entirely new type of existence. His mother's protection and provision became essential for his well-being. The quality of well-being that Elijah experienced became mainly dependent on her. Her patience, her availability, her willingness to conform to whatever he needed would forever nurture his sense of well-being and expectations of life completely. There is nothing with the regard to the health and well-being of society more important than the quality of mothering love a child receives. Nothing apart from the love of God. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sisters. Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. Jesus is drawing attention to his mother, not because he loves her dearly, as surely he did, but because in doing so, he is explaining what he is doing. 
Death on the cross was something he could have avoided, but did not. He chooses the self-sacrificing, tortuous death because in order to save humankind, he had to enter into a new meaning of love, a self-sacrificing love in order to show the depth and revolutionary nature of the love of God. God's love is all-nurturing, all-sustaining, all-forgiving, a love not earned, a love not deserved, but a love like a mother's love given so that we might live. Amen. Please stand for the affirmation of faith, the top of page seven. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being in life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us be thankful for God's goodness. Please sit. On this Mothering Sunday, we pray for mothers everywhere and for the gift of mothering which is shared amongst us all. On this day, let us celebrate with you, Lord, the joy and pain experienced by mothers. We are all sons or daughters and owe our lives and upbringing to those who brought us into the world as part of your creation. May the love that your son showed his mother Mary shine in our lives too. And may our duty of care to our mothers be transfused with love, affection and gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Lord, be with us all in the hard moments of this week. Help us face up to our sin in the certainty that you love us all beyond measure. We pray for Messy Church at St. Richard's. Make it a space, Lord, for, a meeting, for meeting you and one another, for putting down roots and bearing fruit. We pray for our children's church leaders. Give them a thirst for young people to grow as disciples of Jesus. We bring before you inclusive church who are working to build a church which celebrates and affirms every person and does not discriminate. We pray with thanksgiving for the staff at the Diocese of Southwark. May they continue in their dedication of serving the churches in our diocese. We hold before you the concert at St. Thomas's today and that you will bless our efforts to raise money to benefit the people you have given us to love. We pray for the children coming to St. Thomas's next week to hear the Easter story. Holy Spirit, be in the encounters, 
in the speaking and the listening. May the story of the death and resurrection of Jesus inform young lives. This Lent, deepen our faith and strengthen our understanding of Christ's teaching so that our trust in his witness to your love for us may grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and its needs. Loving God, help us to make a difference in your world, in prayer, in action, word and deed. At this time, we pray especially for the peoples who've died in powerful cyclones in Peru and Madagascar. Bring comfort to the bereaved and the support needed to those whose homes have been destroyed. We pray for the lands in which we were born, and today we remember especially Ghana, praying that their laws may be just and your church might witness to the God of all. We hold in prayer Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and our government. Breathe your values into their thinking and renew them to lead the country into loving. We pray for responsible language and compassionate hearts in discussions about those who seek refuge away from the land of their birth. That all might recognize that those who seek refuge are human beings with needs, hopes and fears. May the peace that only you can bring be forged through the intervention of the Holy Spirit and the action of the faithful. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our local community, we pray for the young man stabbed in Charlton this week. Father God, we lament the wickedness that is rampant in our cities, the violence and bloodshed, murder and crime that are so commonplace that the lives of people you have created are treated with such carelessness and contempt. Lord, bring to fruition the good plans for every precious life that you have created. We bring before God the community of Charlton and pray with thanksgiving for the staff who maintain our many parks. We pray for everyone at 68 The Heights and Charlton, Central Charlton Residents Association. We thank you, God, for all they do to enrich the lives of our community. We pray for the staff and patients at Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Oxley's house. Surround all patients with your loving arms, we pray. We lift up the pupils and staff at Thorntree School and all the schools in our benefice. Strengthen teachers with heavy workloads. May they be firm, nurturing and patient. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show compassion, Lord, on all who are sick or have asked for our prayers. Bring relief to those who feel pain and hope to those who face treatment. We pray especially for Rita Yardley, Victoria Bates, Glenn Willis, Kate Dillon, Val Parks, Elsie West, Don Mace, Barbara Payton, Harriet Atafur, Pat Orton, Edna McKinson, Gwen Zamet, Mary Lung, Christine Henderson, Angela Mensa Taylor, Marjorie Hutchinson, Lawrence Williams, Maisie, and Mark Tingay. Grant them a glimpse of your hope and a sign of your love. And in a moment of stillness, we bring to mind the names of others known to us personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who've died and those who mourn them. May those who have died be at peace with you in your eternal kingdom. We remember Victoria Bab Babalola, Roan 
Rose Winter, and those whose memory is especially dear to us on Mothering Sunday. Bring comfort to family and friends, and may they know your love. Give to those who mourn the hope which you have promised to those who believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, the Father Almighty, listen to our prayers and give us the fullness of love and peace. You are always with us. Let us be with you during the coming week. Let us lead the life to which we are called. May we always put our faith in your mercy and live in the hope and love you bring. We say together, God of mercy, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. We now sing our offertory hymn number 605, Sing We of the Blessed Mother. While we sing this hymn, a collection will be made for the mission of the church, and you can place your gifts in the food bank station. If you don't have cash with you but would like to give, please use the card reader after the service. When we take communion, could the choir go first, then wait by the keyboard to sing the lily and the rose?
We begin our Eucharist at the bottom of page nine. God of our journey, as we walk with you on your path of obedience, sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you give us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where the angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and said, this is my body given for you all. Then he gave thanks for the wine, and he took the cup, and gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story.
send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you. And we welcome at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word, and I shall be. We say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body of your blood that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
we now sing our communion hymn number 929, In the Lord I'll Be Ever Thankful. Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, before we begin our notices, is there anything the Sunday school teacher would like to say? You're going to tell us a little bit about what happened in, in Sunday school this morning, okay? So in, today in Sunday school, we were learning about um, how how your mother can do stuff for you, and um, what what things she can do for you, and how she can help you. And we drew um, a mother's a, um, a Mother's Day card for our mothers. Victor did screech. Yes. Go home this afternoon and you wash all the dishes, you clean up your room, and you make your mother feel like she is worth the most important thing, right? Okay, God bless you. Do you want to say something? Okay. Um. The Tamal people. Okay. In my Mother's Day card, I wrote that my mum is supported in everything I do and she's loving and any time um, I get something wrong, she helps me. In Sunday school, um, we learned that 
in Sunday school, we learned that um, you have to be respectful to your mum because they might not be here sometimes. What I learned about Sunday school, uh, what I learned about um, Mother's Day is that on Mother's Day, you always have to be caring about your mother and always be doing the things you should be doing. In Sunday school, <coughs> we need to care for our mother because they help us over time. Every day is Mother's Day. Go ahead. God bless you. Thank you so much. That was really good, man. Good morning, everybody. I'm in this situation where I can either see the notices or you. So... <laughs> So I'm going to see the notices. Um, so we have, um, there's lots of music coming up. We have a Mothering Sunday concert today at St. Thomas's at five o'clock um, featuring the Charlton Ensemble. Um, it might actually have some familiar faces in it. And tickets are available, £10 on the door. There's going to be, I know there's going to be quite a mixture of, um, mixture of things on the program. So... Um, five o'clock. That's enough to come to the concert, have a have a quick drink, and go home and still do dinner. So, <laughs> perfectly timed. And then on Easter Saturday, we have um, a concert for Easter called Arise. That's Saturday, the eighth of April. Um, and I, it says tickets are now available from Judith Barlow, who's here today. Um, you can also buy them via Eventbrite. Um, those of you who haven't used Eventbrite before, it's a sort of a uh, straightforward way of buying tickets online. Um, this is, is, I'm very intrigued because this will be the first, um, first concert, I believe, organised by our director of music. So there's going to be classical music, there's going to be gospel, there'll be local artists, and it'll all be on the theme of new beginnings for Easter. So uh, we do hope you can see, come, come to that. And if today's choir, choral performance during communion is anything to go by, I think it'll be well worth your effort. Um, last reminder for the diocesan lay conference on Saturday the 1st of April. It's open to all lay people. It's free and details of how to book it are in the newsletter. If you haven't got the newsletter, either in a hard copy or um, online, speak to uh, me or perhaps even Rick, who's at the back. <laughs> and finally, also on Saturday the 1st, if you're not at the Diocesan Lay Conference, there's um, a pilgrimage, uh, pilgrimage afternoon at St. Thomas's between 2 and 5, um, and this will be to help us as we come towards the end of our Lenten journey and approach Holy Week. Um, there'll be a film... Um, chance to walk through um, the labyrinth. That's, that's a very moving experience if you haven't done it. And there will also be prayer stations. So, so that's Mothering Sunday concert today. A rise concert on Saturday the 8th, Holy Saturday. Um, last chance for the Diocesan Day Conference and the pilgrimage afternoon at St. Thomas's on Saturday the 1st of April. Um, and this is the bit where I have to ask if anybody's had a birthday this week. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, but, oh, Ben. Right. But did somebody else? Sorry? Okay. Um, so I think we better have happy birthday. Uh, Director of Music. <laughs> happy birthday.
Um, and this was not on the notices, so it's highly, highly out of order. But I understand, <laughs> I understand there are going to be some daffodils, and not just daffodils, a song to accompany the daffodils. Oh, you're going to talk about that. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I have, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, forgive me, the notices clearly haven't come to an end. So we do have daffodils, yes? And we also have a... Oh, right, so, so the Minister of the Word will now tell you about the... Oh, not now. When will the Minister of the Word tell, tell us about the song? When you announce... Okay, the Minister of the Word will announce um, more than the final hymn when he gets to that point. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, I'm this is the final... This is a final prayer, yeah. Going very well. So we say together our final prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining our worship today. Uh, before we go out to join in what God is doing, we'll sing our final hymn together, number 187, Forth in the Peace of Christ We Go. Um, at the end of the hymn, if you'll stay in your places while the choir sing a song composed by Fiona Sinfield. And as you probably already know, there's going to be some daffodils handed out. <laughs> 